It was at this point I realized that driving halfway across Duna was not my best idea ever. And now back to that far away quick save. Let's try this again. This is Echo 3 and welcome back to our career mode discussion. This time I've got some really interesting things to show you. We have a couple contracts with the ScanSat mod to find these Easter eggs on Duna. And boy, are they something unique. If you haven't seen them before, I think they're kind of fun. And since we're going to Duna anyway, we have this other contract to get into Duna orbit. That'll be perfect. I like to maximize my funds by getting as many contracts fulfilled in a single mission. Let's pick up a couple more technologies. I want these rover wheels and some bigger fairings. That'll just help us get to doing a little bit more easily. Now let's build a rover. I want to maximize all the science on this thing. We're going to have a crew of, I think, three. So I want to be able to hold at least that much. This can hold five, so that's perfect. Make it maybe a little bit more roomy. We've got our scanning arm. We've got our mystery goo, our scientist junior. We'll need lots of solar panels. And part of that, Duna doesn't get nearly as much sunlight as Kerbin, so the solar panels won't be as effective, but we'll be all right. I probably would have used more, but that's what we got right now. Throw on four wheels on each side to help keep this thing stable. And this ends up being a really decent design. I keep my wheels level. I attach them all to the same spot on the crew compartment and then just offset from there using the angle snap mode. Let's add a probe core on this as well because this isn't going to be crewed all the time. It'll act as an uncrewed rover. And that part I just put on is the Bon Voyage part. It will let this rover uh, travel without me even being there. Since we're going to be going halfway across Duna, I don't want to have to drive this thing the entire time. This is eight parachutes. That will be like just enough to slow this thing down coming as we descend through the atmosphere. So I won't need to do a propuls propulsive landing. Now let's throw this all in a big fairing. And all right, so what I'm going to do here is in order to help protect the rover and the wheels and some of the more delicate parts, I'm going to use this fairing and I'm going to put a parachute on top of it. And if you've ever seen my sending a rover to Duna video, this is a similar idea here. But what I'm going to do is this whole upper section is going to enter the atmosphere and do a lot of the slowing down. And that drogue chute will help keep us at a safe speed before we deploy and then deploy the other parachutes. Uh, we need just enough here to get us from Duna orbit to, uh, sorry, get us from Kerbin orbit over to Duna, and then a booster section down here to get us most of the way into orbit. And that's really all this is going to need, maybe a few fins to help keep it a little bit more stable on ascent. This is our Duna rover. Perfect. Now, we need to send crew there. So once we get this established, we will build our crewed mission and then they will meet up together on the surface. I'm gonna use this pod because it holds three Kerbals. I don't really have another pod that can do that right now. I didn't unlock them yet. And I'm gonna make kind of a wide base so this can land fairly easily. Again, I'm gonna use the Poodle engines. I like them because they're short. They're pretty good vacuum efficiency. And I'm gonna use some ladders. Just Duna has enough of an atmosphere to make using the jetpack a little tricky. Um, so I'm just gonna use the ladders to help facilitate with that. Plenty of landing gear, support the weight. This is this will work out well, kind of a wide base. Again, I've got a small reaction wheel up top there. The pod doesn't have any reaction wheels in it and this will just help keep the craft oriented or maneuvers in, in space, just slight things. We don't have to do a lot of maneuvering. A few solar panels and I'm gonna use these air brakes to help orient the craft while it's ascending through Duna's atmosphere because I want to make sure that it lands correctly. Um, that one parachute up the top will not be enough and we're going to assemble the rest of the stack here. Just, you know, I need enough to, need enough delta V to go from obviously Kerbin surface up into orbit, but that's about 3,400 meters per second. I need about 1,100 meters per second of delta V to go from low Kerbin orbit to Duna, and I intend to aero break. So let's let's give, you know, maybe 1,300 meters for that, and I'll want around 100 meters per second with my current design to slow down enough for landing. We're not at a Duna transfer window, so I time warp to one, and there we go. Let's launch our crew. I did add a couple of these boosters on the side, just 
to make sure I had enough Delta V. We do. We have plenty of Delta V. I didn't read to, but I just wanted to give myself a huge margin for error on this mission because I am sending our, our three prominent astronauts on this mission, or Kerbal knots. So let's get them into orbit safely. There we go. When we're, we are in, in good shape with this. There we go. Um, that'll set them up. And then we'll launch our other section into orbit as well. But I'm going to use this new maneuver planner and try it out, see how that works out for us. It looks pretty interesting in my opinion. I, I like the way it seems to handle. Um, it worked well in this case. Now we're going to launch an, our rover and it's going to get into orbit. And I'm going to plot this one by hand. Now my Kerbal alarm clock and the in-game alarm clock didn't quite give the same date, very similar, but not quite the same date for the transfer window. So I'm gonna try just doing one one way and the other the other way, see how that ends up working out for us. This thing, um, again, we don't have any problems getting to orbit. In my very limited spare time, I have been playing another game, a game not made by Squad, but a game called Squad. It's a unique first person shooter. I find it different. It's a very teamwork-oriented game, so I know it, it's a little bit different. Not uh, not maybe my my normal style of game. I don't do very much in the way of shooters, but that's been kind of fun to to try a, a different game out. You guys play under any other games besides Kerbal Space Program? You know, leave a comment. Uh, tell me what you like to play. Now I'm transferring this by hand, just trying to get close, and ultimately I ended up having I don't know if it was a glitch or something. But my crew section that I transferred with the the in-game calculator, I it, it kept changing where my uh, my orbit lines were in relation to Duna. I, I, I don't know. It's like my velocity was was changing or something without me putting any engine thrust. I don't know if it was a weird bug or, or what was going on. It ended up taking me several hundred meters per second. Of Delta V extra to correct for whatever the game did. So that was a big pain. This one I transferred by hand seemed to work fine. I didn't have any issues with it when I did my own maneuvers. So I don't know if, it, if, if it's a weird bug. Uh, time warping seemed to solve the issue. Um, when I jumped to time warp into Duna's sphere of influence from solar orbit, it fixed the issue, but it, it was a pain. Now both of these missions, I'm gonna aero break over the South Pole and we're gonna land on the south side of the planet. Now because I have a rover, I'll be able to just drive the rover to wherever the crew land. So it, it can be a pain. Now the way I solved a lot of my issues with just driving rovers being such a huge pain in the rear end is for the first time in my life, I used the Bon Voyage mod. I've never used it before. Boy, did that make such a difference. I could go do other things, go into time warp, and the rover would just go where I wanted it to go, and I'd just get to it when I needed to use it. I <laughs> really appreciated that mod. So I, I would have said rovers are just pointless and such time consuming. Uh, that probably, I don't know how many hours that saved for me not having to physically drive the rover. So really like that mod. I'd love to see something like that implemented in Kerbal Space Program 2, or obviously I don't think it's got any more major things like that are gonna get implemented in Kerbal Space Program 1 here, but boy, really nice feature to have. Again, this same idea, I'm gonna come in over the South Pole and we're gonna aero break and land. If you're intending to land, uh, aero braking into a landing like this can really save a lot on your Delta V budget. Um, in the case of going to Duna here, you know, we're, we're talking hundreds uh, or close to a thousand meters per second can be saved by just aero braking into a landing rather than trying to burn, get into orbit and then do a deorbit burn and, and then land. So aero braking can be a wonderful way to help save on your budgets. I have a little video I did on that, just kind of demonstrating what you can do. I highlight aero braking uh, into orbit around Eve, aero braking into landing around Duna, and even aero braking into orbit around Jewel, and then aero braking into or uh, into landing around 
uh, lathe. So it's, it's a pretty cool little video if you've never seen it. Um, anyway, I, I enjoy arrow braking. It's a really cool thing. Our rover is down safely onto the surface. Now, let's see, we just need to eject. And let's see, uh, there's some blueberries here. Let's go ahead and scan them. We'll get the science from that. Now, I ended up cutting out some footage. Um, I, I drive the rover a lot or I, I jump to different points. So you're not gonna see me gather necessarily all the science around everywhere but I do try to gather quite a bit of science while I'm on Duna and get the most out of it because I mean there are thousands and thousands of science points that we could get here and you know I could have spent more time driving around to the different biomes on Duna and got way more than twice as much as what this mission ends up getting but I'm very satisfied with the results that we have. Uh, the arrow brakes here you can see really help keep the craft oriented properly. It would kind of want to go nose forward if I didn't have them so a nice little feature that I use there now we are not going to be very close to the rover but again I'm just the rover's got a probe core on it so it's just going to drive over to the lander's location Duna is honestly not like huge of a planet I mean we're, we're talking hundreds of kilometers here that it's going to have to travel but you know it's not like we're traveling thousands or anything and you know, we, I don't like this. We are, we are sliding. Let's just, um, we got lots of Delta V. We'll just land a little bit safer. That's more level. Perfect. Put the solar panels out and start gathering some science. And we will um, drive the rover over here. I'm going to get use the Bon Voyage mod here and drive over. Perfect. We'll just have the Kerbals get out, gather science, all that good stuff. We are in wheat harvest time right now. And I, you know, I was hoping, oh, we'll have, maybe I'll have more time to play and record videos. Just every time I say that, it, it just, it's never the case. I've always got something going on on the farm that <laughs> just, I'm so busy. Um, then we'll need a bale straw and bale hay, you know, take care of the cattle. It just, there's always something going on. You know, I, I can put in 40 hours by Tuesday afternoon and yeah, uh, <laughs> farming takes a lot of my life. Nice little photo out there with my Kerbals. Let's um, go ahead and just get everyone in. There we go, perfect, gather all the signs. And I wanna, I wanna get all the signs here. Transfer that and, okay. Uh, use my scientist here and he can reset those experiments, which is perfect. So we'll get this, all these points and he'll put it in to our uh, command module up there, which can be a little tricky getting up and down there but perfect go in get in I honestly I really like this rover design it uh, pretty stable as far as driving it really was hard to flip as long as I was you know relatively careful in driving it now we've got some time to kill while we're driving to our location and I thought you know what let's do a quick flight mission I really love flying planes and Gerbil space program and so I want to do a quick one and in this case we're gonna we're going to unlock a new airport for us to use here on Kerbin. So we'll just go ahead. This is no, nothing uh, fancy design. I am using uh, a few modded parts here. The engine is modded, although the Panther engine would be similar. Um, it's a similar engine. I'm, I'm going to use a little dihedral angle and a little uh, angle of incidence on the wings to help fly stably. Um, more efficiently, I, you know, put a little more fuel. I, I try to, so I'm using the mod RCS build aid, and that's that red circle. Um, that's my dry center of mass compared to my wet center of mass, or with or without fuel there. Um, so it just helps me design my spacecraft or aircraft so they're going to have an even fuel usage. Perfect. Now we're just going to go ahead and I use this atmospheric auto plate, auto. Uh, I use an atmospheric autopilot mod to help <laughs> with getting places. Again, it also saves lots of time. I can just set it, let it fly, and I can do other things, you know, go get some coffee or whatever I need to do, come back. So we've just unlocked this airfield, and we'll go ahead and fly back to Kerbin. Again, the autopilot mod, so helpful, um, saves me some time. Uh, a lot of this you can probably do with MechJeb as well. I, just I tend not to use that mod I my opinion is it does too much um, any 
it's my opinion it does too much for me and I, I guess I don't like all of that so I've got some other mods that can do some of the same things oh yeah we've got the satellite let's transmit some science from it as well hey we got some uh, Duna blueberries again we'll go ahead and pick those up perfect and put those lots of science we can get so much science from doing it especially I've got the breaking ground uh, DLC which lets me do some added science experiments on the surface what is this thing we have quite the opportunity to check out this unique curiosity oh, okay I know I get it it's supposed to look like the camera on the rover on the rovers uh, curiosity and opportunity both of them now aren't working anymore they kind of both died the one got stuck in the sand and couldn't orient its uh, solar panels right and the other one probably had too much dust gather on its solar panels and it it died as well but uh, those probes uh, those rovers lasted a long way longer they had like a 90 day mission that they're supposed to what what is this oddity it looks kind of like a Kerbal face what do you guys think that looks like have you seen this before on Duna uh, and there are other actually there's some other uh, Easter eggs on Duna we're, we're not gonna see all of them uh, in this particular mission but there are some really cool things here and I liked with the 1.12 update they added even more Easter eggs in the game so I, I just I love the direction squad took with the game and just I like exploring around the system I'd like having a reason to explore and these little Easter eggs to me are a fascinating bit to the game I wish there's maybe more to it, more with the story, more um, like why are they here? We're just left to guess about these odd things. I mean, they're just random Easter eggs of sorts. Other things, you know, um, are, are put into the game in tribute to fallen astronauts or, or probes or something. But um, there are some other really odd things like that Kerbal face, the weird uh, saucers that are crashed on the Mon and on Kerbin and some other unique things like pyramids and various locations that I, I wish there was some, maybe some story with the game that we could get into <laughs> getting into my rocket was a little hard uh, fortunately those little um, air brakes help with that and we need to launch back into orbit and once we're in orbit we'll be able to plot our maneuver home we'll need to wait for a transfer window to do that but we'll just get into orbit first uh, Duna it takes around 1500 meters per second of Delta V to get into orbit so try to budget something like that if you are doing a, a Duna mission as well I obviously I way over budgeted for this mission I didn't know how much I was going to need I probably should have spent more pinpointing my landing somewhere closer I didn't do that probably should have I mean I had plenty of Delta V to spare you can see how much I've got up there that's the Kerbal Engineer readout if you aren't familiar up at the top and I, another mod I really love I just I like having all the information displayed up there and you can customize what's up there as well um, just right now I'm plotting my return trip to Kerbin the in-game calculator for the ejection burn didn't like my inclined orbit around Duna although it was actually not bad Again, I'm going to use the air brakes here just kind of help keep the craft oriented in a good manner. I could have just ejected the, the pod as it was. I don't know. I decided not to. And ultimately, we end up we kind of crash. For some reason, it crashes and keeps mostly intact. I, I don't know exactly why that worked out. So I can recover quite a bit of this. There we go. Let's see how much science we got from this mission. Oh, for 5,000. That's pretty cool. We'll have lots of cool science points to spend on other things. This is Echo 3. Thanks for joining me on my modded career mode discussion. I will see you next time.